Hi, Kevin Ledoux, Ledoux Guitars. Um, I'm sure many of you, uh, especially if you're really new to guitar making, are aware of the frustration that can be involved in making a proper uh, lap joint for the X brace in your top. Um, it can be a frustration. Now these can be cut accurately by hand, uh, and I'm sure there are a hundred different ways at least to cut these by machine if you want to set up something specialized, you know, you can make this happen real fast. But just a couple of days ago, I happened to watch a video on YouTube um, by this fellow that calls himself Stumpy Nubs. He's, I think his real name is James Hamilton. He's out of Michigan, and he has some really good uh, videos and tutorials on different aspects of woodworking and equipment and so on. Um, you could probably get what I'm going to show you from his video, uh, but I thought I'd piggyback on what he demonstrated and narrow the, the demonstration down to just this specific joint. Concept is the same, but uh, maybe you'd like to see it uh, just focused on this. So I'm going to move you in closer and show you what's going to happen here. I'm showing a demonstration top here, and I have laid out the proposed X brace. I want to point out that I have intentionally darkened all of the line work to make it more visible uh, for anybody viewing. And I've put an X on the lower side of each line to show me which side of the line the brace is actually going to sit on. Um, this top is not ready for anything yet. It's just glued up. Um, but for demonstration purposes, this is what you'd have, hopefully just much lighter lines so that they're easier to... Uh, sand away or obscure by whatever means. So I have made a pair of X braces here uh, and I have them already arched to the doming that I expect to do or perfectly flat if that happens to be your preference. Now what I'm going to do is cut a half lap uh, joint on the table saw and it relies on just two simple concepts. Uh, that first one and most important one being that whatever the material thickness is that you have for your braces you want to get that to your desired thickness and take a scrap and cut it off that so that you have this scrap piece exactly the same thickness as your brace stock and it is of course imperative that the two braces be exactly the same thickness so you'd want to drum sand those out or saw them out at the same time um, or if you're uh, confident enough with a hand plane, then you can hand plane them to the same thickness and you'll be good to go that way. So what I've done is I'm going to take my brace, this one with the arch down is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to position the brace where I want it on the top. And all I'm concerned about is where the high point is. I may want to shift that back and forth. And of course, I want to be at its extreme limits out here. I don't want to fall short anywhere. I want to make sure I'm extended uh, the full distance so that I have room to scallop that off and cut that into my lining when the time comes. And I'm going to take a pencil. I'm going to use a heavy one so that you can see what's happening. And I'm going to strike just a line here showing me where I want the joint to be. And I'm going to put another line over here, nowhere near it, uh, but on the correct side of the X, so that I know right in this area is where I'm going to cut the joint. And that's really all I need to do to lay this out, because my other brace is going to match up to that very nicely. So now we're going to move over to the table saw, and I'll show you the specific technique. Well, the first thing that I did at my table saw was adjust my blade so that it is precisely uh, protruding above the table one half the, the height of my braces. Now you want to get this accurate but if you miss it by a little bit uh, stay below the half the halfway mark so that you can tweak that. You can, you can manage to do that quite easily. So I've taken my miter gauge now and I have adjusted its angle uh, to match the required angle. In my case, the angle of the X brace is 100 degrees. So I've set that up here on my miter gauge. Uh, 
This is, as I've mentioned before, a slick exotic one and setting 100 degrees was a simple matter, but not to worry. You could do the same thing without any of this junk here. If you've got a simple miter gauge like this, you can still establish the correct angle and you'll just want to put a longer guide rail on it uh, so that you can accommodate the length of your work. But you don't need any of this expensive stuff to do this job. So I'm positioning my brace so that, hope you can see all of this easily. I'm positioning my brace so that the right side of my uh, saw blade is touching the mark. It's hitting the joint. And I have adjusted my stop over here. I've adjusted this stop so that a scrap block sits in there. So I'm going to put the scrap block in line this up with a sawtooth and adjust my stop back and forth until I hit that point. Pretty simple. Now, here's the only real guesswork trick that I found in this particular job. Uh, one half of the joint has to be cut on the arch side of the brace and the other one on the flat side. Well, as you can imagine, if when you're doing the arch side, you could press this all the way down, this end of the brace is going to stick up and it's going to throw that cut out a square and probably uh, more than you can tolerate. Now, you could, I suppose, come up with some kind of gauging, measuring, you know, and you could even all of this out and get it exactly the same, but I don't think you need to do that. What I'm doing is I'm just carefully gauging by eye where this falls. I think another way you might do this is you could adjust a square um, to drop down to this point here, you know, at the center of the brace and just gauge by pulling this up to where the square sits. I'm not demonstrating that because I think it's a little extreme, but here's what I'm going to do now. I've got this set up and I have this scrap block the same thickness as my brace stock and I'm going to cut the first portion of the joint. As soon as I've done that, I'm going to remove that and I'm going to move my stock over, but the stock will move too far. It will move too far by the thickness of the blade. And so I have this shim, happens to be made of padauk, um, but I've milled this to 125 thousandths of an inch thick, which is the same as the kerf that this particular blade cuts. I think most standard carbide blades probably cut about the same kerf it's key that you would have to make yourself one of these by whatever means you can. Um, it's very doable. And fortunately you only need something small like this. So, you know, if you miss five of them and you, you don't hit it until the sixth or the 10th, you know, it's okay. You can still do it because it doesn't cost you a lot of wood. So I'm going to make my first cut. I'm going to pull the scrap out of here and I'm going to put my shim in. Okay, here we go. Okay, out goes the strap piece, in goes my gauge block. And I've got half of the joint made. Now I can test that by putting those together. You see, I've got a good clean fit there. That's nice, nothing wrong with that. So now my next brace, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put in my scrap block, but this time I'm going to lay the straight joint or excuse me, the straight side of the brace down on the saw. And I'm just going to repeat. Out goes the scrap, in goes the shim. Magically, the table saw turns off. I don't know how that happens. But now, I slip these together, and it's actually tight. It's very tight. And there's my X joint. Now, you can see that I'm proud here, and I'm, you know, off here. But that's okay, because the joint is tight. So I can reach down in there now with 
You could do it with a chisel. You can do it with a file if you're careful not to open the joint. There's any number of ways you can reach in and drop that bottom a little bit until those two braces come flush on the bottom is where you're paying most attention. They should come flush here too, but of course on the bottom is where it really counts because that's your glue surface. As I showed you before, my joint was off a little bit. Um, things didn't flush up. You would be better off to run some tests with, uh, with material of the same width at that uh, point where the joint's to be cut uh, until you get that perfectly the way you want it. But since I didn't, what I'm gonna do is just take this little craft saw here and uh, with a bench hook, if you don't have a bench hook, make yourself one or two or three because they're extremely handy. And I'm gonna be careful about how deeply I cut down in there, but I'm just gonna extend that depth a little bit. And I'm gonna take, in this case, an eighth inch chisel. And I'm just gonna pull out a sliver or two in there, keeping that nicely square across and being conservative with each cut and then testing. And I've pretty well got it right there. So it's pretty easy to do. If I bring you over here to the top now um, and set this on the lines where it's supposed to go, I come out looking pretty happy. I'm, I'm very satisfied with the, uh, the X angle. Uh, that was all adjusted in carefully, and this is going to work beautifully. When I put this on my, uh, my dish and put it in the go bar deck, this is going to glue down very, very nicely. Now, if you're really new to guitar making and not aware of this, after this is glued down, you'll want to glue over the open side of the joint, which is this member happens to be. You'll want to glue probably a strap over that to even increase its strength more. The old uh, vintage Martin linen patch that was over that, um, I'm not sure what that was all about. They, I know they had a reason for it. I don't know what it was, but um, I much prefer a strap over that. Well, thanks for watching this presentation. Um, I was in hopes that by focusing in on this specific task in guitar making, it would either re-explain or amplify what this other gentleman has already pointed out in his video on making lap joints. At any rate, uh, thanks again for watching. Kevin Ledoux at Ledoux Guitars, and I'll see you again the next time.